This has 98 different parameters that it's going to test when you send this off to the lab and tell you exactly what's going on with the water in your tank. And it's not just that. They're going to give you recommendations about what you should do to correct any problems as well. We're going to go through the entire process start to finish right here. So make sure you stick around to see the end. So when you get your box, this is what it's going to look like. Busting this thing open, the very first thing you're going to see on top is this little warning, right? Register your account right now before you do anything else with this kit. You can go to the website here or the QR code. This is step number one, okay? If you don't do this, you're going to end up with big problems later on. That's why it's red. <laughs> so do this first and then move on. Now the instructions look to be very complicated, but if you look at each picture individually, it breaks it down for you and it's really not that bad. We're going to go through it here step by step and uh, make sure that you have everything laid out exactly as you need it to. It comes with the labels. If we open this up right here, right here on the back side are the labels that you need to label your vials with. So they send those as well. This is your code. When you call into the company or when you talk to them, they're not going to ask you for your name. They don't keep a database of names. Uh, there, there's privacy rules and things like that over in Germany and whatnot. You're going to use this number. That is your unique number for your tank. Moving right along, this is the shipping label. You're going to affix this to the box once you get finished and stick this in the mailbox. So here's what you're going to get in the box. You have this big uh, vial right here and you have three smaller ones. The one with the red lid is so you can test your RODI water, which is absolutely amazing. You're going to get this syringe right here, which says that it holds 20 milliliters. And you're going to get this little filter. Now, this is a bacterial filter, and I'll show you what to do with this in just a minute. All right, moving right along, we're going to take our labels. You pull them off just like that, and we're going to go ahead and affix them to the side of the tube just like that make sure they're stuck down really good they're not going to come off of there and like i said earlier the red one is for reverse osmosis so you'll use the red label to fix onto that tube just like this mine's a little crooked but i'm sure that that will be just fine do the other two and we're good to go so here's what you're going to do with the big tube take it take the top off just like this put both down in the aquarium water, shake all the bubbles out, and you'll want to close this up just like this inside the aquarium. You don't want to get outside air or anything like that in there and take it out of the water, rinse it off, wipe it off, and that's your big tube sample ready to go. For the two small vials, you're going to need the syringe and the little bacterial filter as well. And the instructions look a little confusing about these ones, but this is exactly what you need to do. Before you put the bacterial filter on, you're gonna use this and draw up 25 milliliters of water from the aquarium. It goes right to the top just like this, and if you're not careful, you can pull the plunger out. And I don't think it's that important because of the next step. All right, so now that we got this full, we're gonna go ahead and attach the bacterial filter. We're gonna put that on just like that. And then the next step is to push 10 milliliters back through this filter, getting it wet and ready to go. Just like that. And then we're going to take our vial that we have here and go ahead and put the other 15 mils from the syringe into the vial. It is a little resistant when you push it, but it will go in there all the way to the top. Toss the cap on here, do it again for the other one, and you're good to go. That's important to remember that when you do this again, you need to remove the bacterial filter to draw up the 25 mils for the second run into this vial. For the reverse osmosis vial, you just fill it up with your reverse osmosis water, put the cap on, drop it in the box, and there we go. So let's go ahead and peel this off. We're going to stick this label right to the front, just like that. As you can see, it already has the address of the local place where this needs to be shipped to. And Fauna Marine ships these off to Germany three times a week. So you're actually going to get your results back pretty fast. Don't forget to pop a quick piece of tape on just like that 
for good measure. So while we wait for that to be sent off and come back, let's talk about some of the benefits of running an ICP test and specifically the Fauna Marine ICP test on your reef aquarium. Like I said before, they're going to test for 98 different variables in your tank. Everything from salinity all the way through all of the elemental compounds that we need to know about, like alkalinity, two different kinds of phosphates, calcium, and all of this other stuff. Now you can say, you know, hold up, we can test for that stuff in our homes. Well, that's pretty much true, but it's a lot harder for us to test for things like fluoride and iodine and strontium and molybdenum and these other elements like this that are very important parts of a reef aquarium's makeup. The trace elements in a tank like this could be the difference between you having a good time and having a not so good time with the coral in your tank, especially if you're talking about SPS coral like Acropora. There are a lot of things that I like about the Fauna Marine Lab, but primarily it's their focus on engineering their ICP tests around what a saltwater aquarium needs, not what the ocean needs. And as much as we would like to think so, our aquariums and our homes simply are not the ocean. They're not going to run the same way. They're not going to run with the same amount of trace elements and things like that. People have taken samples and found many more times ammonia in that water than what is sustainable in our aquariums. It's simply just not the same environment. And the people over at Fauna Marine know this because primarily before they started doing the ICP testing, they're a coral farm. They frag corals and they grow corals. They have plate corals that are two and three foot around like this. And you just don't see that with the other ICP testing laboratories. They want to match their tests to the various places in the world, like Fiji, for example. But that's just not going to work for an aquarium unless you're chasing perfection and you have reached God tier level reef status, which most of us haven't. With that being said, and their concentration on building a database around reef tank parameters, I feel like going with them is probably the better choice. Now they do have another test as well that isn't the total ICP test, it's just the reef ICP test, and it tests for a few less things, and that might be more appropriate for you if you don't want to go with all 98 of the parameters. All right, well, the tank looks a little bit different now than it did at the beginning of the video because I've put new lights on the tank and my beard has probably grown a little bit since then. But that's because this part of the video was filmed about a month after the original part, but the ICP test results came in about three and a half weeks ago. I've just been running late, so let's go check them out. All right, so once on the computer, you're going to want to navigate over here to lab.faunamarin.de. And then you'll change this to the country or at least to the language that you're going to speak and let that load. Here we go. If you're brand new to the first time to this site, you're going to have to go down here and register. But I've already done that, so I don't have to go through that. And it's showing me right here that CV Industries, that's Coral View, is a lab collection center. And it's because I've chosen that with my uh, account. So let's go ahead and get logged in here. And we'll do just like that. Here we go. All right, now we are logged in. The first time that you get here, it's going to look a little bit different. You're going to have to fill out some stuff over here. You're going to have to build your aquarium as I've built mine here, the aquarium, the 210 living room tank. I have multiple tanks and you can have multiple ICP tests for all of your different tanks. But once you get all of this set up, you're going to have to register your test kit and start your analysis. Do not forget to do that. I forgot to do that. And about a week and a half after I sent the analysis off, it hadn't come back yet. And that's because I never started the analysis. Now, once I figured that out, Fauna Marine, uh, they had already done the analysis and they just didn't know whose account to tag it to. So once I did that, they went ahead and tagged the account and everything was good to go. So right here, you can see my latest 10 analysis. This is for the main tank. And then right down here is the analysis for my RODI unit. So let's go ahead and take a look at that one real quick. And as you can see, we have zeros across the board all the way except this one. So I actually do have 0.8 milligrams per liter of silicon coming through 
my RODI unit. So it's not doing exactly what I want it to do. I'm going to have to add a silicate filter to my RODI, making it a five stage rather than a four stage so that I can get rid of this. And this concentration isn't huge, but it's there. And this could lead to dinoflagellates. It could lead to diatom problems and things like that, cyanobacteria and some other stuff. So I want to make sure that I get that gone. I would not have known that had I not done this ICP test because my meter said that my TDS on my RODI was zero. Going back to the main page, we can click into my analysis and wow, man, this is wild. When I first saw this, I was kind of taken back, but I sort of expected it after not doing water changes for so long. And it's giving me these red things right here that are like, these things need to be checked right now, immediately, right away, and repaired. These things down here, it's telling me, are of very high importance. And it gives you this quick overview of dosing if you want to correct all of the things that are up here, but you don't want to dig through the entire ICP test. They have these recommendations here for you and telling you how much per day to go ahead and add to the tank. Or you can jump to specific values. All of these are hyperlinked. So if I want to look at my calcium to salinity ratio, I could just click right here, go straight in. The macronutrients are all here, nitrate, nitrite, phosphates, you know, PO4 versus, uh, to iodine concentration, nitrate to PO4 concentration, and these kinds of things. If you're trying to hit the red field ratios, stuff like that, you can find that information there. If we scroll down a little bit further, we've got these physiologically relevant trace elements like zinc, vanadium, copper, and the other ones. These are important to have in our tanks, and we need to have them in the tank at the correct levels. Other trace elements and potential pollutants as well are all in here. I didn't have anything in further notes, so they didn't make any, you know, like mega suggestions or whatever for this section here. And then we can get into the actual analysis. So this is what it looks like. Electrical conductivity looks good which, and coming down to density. This is about the content of the salt in the water. So according to this, measuring the, dense, um, the, the density of the salt in the water, I'm okay. And I'm not going to go through every single one of these, but just to give you an idea of what they look like, salinity is in the good range. pH is a little low, but it's good. It says that I'm at 98.7% of the ideal value. They say no actions necessary because the pH is at 8. My personal goal, I like to see my pH up around 8.3. That's where the best growth happens from most of your skeletonized corals and things in an aquarium, but 8 is acceptable. Now, this is a good example of something that isn't quite right. My alkalinity was a little bit higher than the ideal range. Now, I don't know if I necessarily agree with this, but it's hard for me to dismiss them choosing this as the ideal range because they are literally a coral farm with engineers and data scientists and stuff that are studying these things. So according to them, 9.9 .9 DKH is a little high. Now, in the reefing community, we like to say that anywhere from 7 to 12 is generally good with alkalinity, and I believe that tanks can run up here this high but I've since this test, I've brought this down closer to nine and I absolutely saw an improvement in my corals. So it's telling you what this is over here. It's listing the problem with it over here and then what you should do about it right here. And then the big red box, it's telling you reduce the dosage of carbonate hardness. I'm not dosing, so that doesn't apply. Slightly increase the calcium value and let the carbonate hardness fall. That only works if you have corals that are consuming calcium and alkalinity. But it's really nice that they tell you what to do here. So if we just go down and look at a couple of other ones, we have acid binding capacity that has, this is a relationship with the carbonate hardness. And uh, some of these directions will tell you exactly the same thing as some of the other ones, but it goes more into depth. So I had no color to my water. I had no smell to my water. So that's good. Chloride, sodium, sulfur, sulfates, potassium, all of those were good. So here, let's look at this. We have boron in here. I was 138% over the ideal value of boron. And this is a perfect example of something bad that happens not doing water changes regularly because 
This built up over time, over a year of not doing these water changes. And what is the answer to this? A partial water change. So things like this are what lead us down the road of having the information that we should be doing 10% water changes weekly on our tanks. So my calcium was a little bit high. I knew that, not a big deal. My strontium was a little bit high. And look at what the corrective action is. Partial water changes. Imagine that. Bromine was way high. So let's look at what this could cause in a reef tank. Too little bromine leads to loss of color and growth, especially in soft corals like gorgonian sponges, but also in hard coral. Bromine is also important for the formation of the fluorescent effects in the coral, but too high values can cause tissue detachment starting in the middle of the coral. So bromine can literally be a problem with euphilias and you can end up with polyp bailout and things like that if you have bromine at this kind of a value. And can you guess what the corrective action is? That's right. Perform a partial water change. <laughs> a lot of the things that were wrong with this tank could simply be fixed with partial water changes. And I did in fact do that. And I also swapped salts at the same time. And I can tell you now that my tank looks a lot better than it did. This one is one that I was very interested in. Iodine and is way down here. Now, this is something that is used up by corals. It's, uh, it has to do with uh, tissue coloration and growth, colorless growth tips on your SPSs and growth edges, as well as light sensitivity. I did not know that part until I read this ICP analysis. So, what do they recommend that you do here? They recommend that I dose Elemental Trace 1, which is their own product, and it's, I'm sure it's an excellent product. But in this case, all I had to do was start performing 10% weekly water changes. So the main takeaway that I want you to have, you know, in looking at this ICP test is don't get lost in the data. You know, if, you, if it comes back and you have all of these red things like this, then you have a serious problem. I had a serious problem. I had not done water changes on my tank in a very long time. And uh, at the time of this test, I was using Instant Ocean Reef Crystal Salt, which I have since quit using because the salt is just no good for my tank. It has extremely high trace element concentration, and it's just not doing the job for me. So I've swapped. I'm using Fauna Marine Salt now, and I like the way that it's going. My point is, if you have one or two red things here, then dig into those and see what those are. If you have a lot of red things here, then instead of trying to go through each one of these and make corrective actions on each one of these, you need to figure out what the total solution is. And one of the things that I really like about ICP from Fauna Marine is you can come right up here. I can select my aquarium. And I can select an advisor. I can come right over here. Let's find USA. So I can talk to somebody from Frag Farm Limited or Reef Bomb and actually start a conversation with a professional, with an expert, and get recommendations based on this ICP test of what they think I should do to my tank. That's cool. So now you might be wondering, how do you get this kit? And you can go to the Coral View website and find their store locator. Use that to find a local fish store near you that is selling this product and go pick one of those up at that store and do one of these tests for yourself. If you want to watch a video on the two year history of the absolute roller coaster ride that I've been through with this tank, check out the video on the screen right now. I'm sure that you're going to find that interesting. And I'll see you over there.